Okay, the recording will start shortly. So uh, I'll pray and then we will begin. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for adding another day into our lives, Lord. And Father, even as your word encourages us that we must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father, we present ourselves, Lord, as, as uh, willing uh, people with open hearts for you to write your word uh, on it, Lord. And Father, we thank you for the power of your word. We believe that your word will uh, transform us, Lord, inside out. Father, we commit ourselves uh, uh, to you. And Lord, we pray that this morning as we meditate on the subject of prayer and intercession, that Lord, you would speak to us, Father God, and make uh, everything real. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so hope uh, you're all doing well. Everyone who's present here, doing fine? Week two? Okay, that's good. That's good. And uh, also the online students, I really hope that you know, you're all keeping well and uh, that you're learning uh, something out of all these classes that you've been attending. So uh, I'll quickly have a recap of what we were studying last week. Um, for the on-campus students, you know, uh, you probably have the notes with you. You already have it? Wonderful. Great. So you can look into your notes. But in any case, uh, you know, for better clarity, I am also projecting the uh, screen here. Uh, and for the online students, I have already posted the notes for you so you can download it and uh, follow along. Okay. Um, so in the last class, we looked at the purpose of prayer. And we understood that prayer is more than just bringing our wish list to God, which is what most people understand prayer to be. Uh, it is about communicating with God. And when we say communication, it is a two-way communication. You know, we uh, speak to God, but also God speaks back to us. We also saw that our times of prayer are times when God gives himself to us. And you know we are able to pour out our hearts unto the Lord. We saw that it is warfare. We saw you know, so many different things about prayer. That it's not just about uh, bringing our needs and you know laying it before the throne of uh, God and forgetting about it. Then we also looked at the purpose of prayer. And we said that uh, God himself has given man authority when he created man. And he deputed man uh, to take charge of the world. Okay? Uh, and man is supposed to steward everything that has been entrusted to him with that dominion and authority given by God. One of the ways in which we are able to release that authority and accomplish the purposes of God is through prayer, and which is why prayer is important. So prayer is a way of enforcing the authority of God here on the earth. So that also we understood. And then we went on to look at uh, uh, what the self-sufficiency of God means and at the same time how God has chosen to depend on the prayers of men. So it's um, an arrangement where God wants us to co-labor together with him. Though he can do things by himself, he has chosen to do it along with us. Okay? So we, we saw that whole dynamics of God's self-sufficiency and his dependence on our prayers. And therefore, you know, we concluded by saying that we need to pray. If we don't pray, then we miss the opportunity of having God come and intervene in our lives, in our circumstances. And I started off with chapter 2, where um, we want to understand the right foundation for prayer. Okay, uh, But the initial part of this chapter Endless all of the wrong reasons why one goes to God in prayer and the way you know one chooses to pray. And you know, we, we said many things like you know, prayer is not a ritual, prayer is not a, a, an obligation or a religious duty, prayer uh, is not something that you know we just do on the outside, but 
it has to come from our hearts we also said that you know, prayer uh, does not mean that we are able to convince god to do something which he does not want to do okay? uh, and you know, we also looked at the fact that you know prayer without faith where we just pray and assume that things will happen things will uh, take place if they don't then you know we we will manage so that kind of an attitude and a faithless way of praying does not really amount to much we also looked at the fact that prayer is not to be used to prove one's spirituality so we uh, can try to prove our spirituality by the kind of language that we use in prayer or um, you know the tone in which we pray or just in front of people you know, we are able to make ourselves look great spiritually uh, but that in itself is not the purpose of prayer and we shouldn't use prayer for that so these are all some of the key things that we uh, looked at so just before i go into um, more about prayer and the right foundation i just want to pause and ask all of you uh, do you still uh, are you clear on these things or do you have any questions if there are we can discuss that and then you know go forward so the students who are here as well as the online students please to let me know uh, if i can proceed and uh, online students i hope you can hear me very well because last time there was some um, challenge with the sound everything okay everything good all right yes great to know that right. yes thank you so much all right let's let's move forward so we're talking about the foundation for prayer now here are seven important keys on which we must lay the foundation for prayer so the right kind of prayer is will stand on these seven things so that's what we are beginning with the foundation for prayer we should have a strong foundation we just understood that prayer is not um, you know some sort of a superficial activity which is part of our religious duty but it has to come from the depths of our heart and we also saw how prayer is really designed by god so what is the right foundation for prayer there are seven things that we will go over hopefully in the first session i will try and uh, touch on three or four of these and then you know the remaining in the second session today so the nature of god is the first and most important foundation you know uh, that we need to understand secondly intimacy with god is the second one the third is the redemptive heart of god fourth the promises of god fifth partnering with the holy spirit sixth our position in christ seventh a life of surrender so we are going to go over all these seven and ensure that we understand these and build our prayer life on these seven keys so the first one here is to understand the nature of god so the nature of god refers to who god is or in other words who he really is okay and what he does for example in um, school if you have been uh, obviously you all have been in school and you might recall that you know uh, even as you were interacting let's say with your teachers and you would understand that okay one particular teacher uh, it's easier to approach you know another teacher maybe not so easy to approach so you understand their nature and uh, you would you would probably really think of the right time to approach the teacher who you know may not respond favorably to you so depending on people's nature their behavior you know we um, interact with them so for us especially when we come to god we have to understand the nature of god you know who god is what he is made up of 
and how he would react in any given situation or what would be his thoughts you know, uh, of uh, about a given person or a circumstance so when i understand the nature of god my prayer life becomes very effective okay and i will tell you more about it soon so i need to understand the nature of god in other words you know we use this term for for us we say self image we should have the right self image where i see myself for who i am you know if you look at god's word we know that god's word says i am redeemed i am forgiven i am blessed i am victorious i am healed and you know all these that all, all these um descriptions you know of me which make me who i really am in christ jesus in the same way what is god's nature you know who is god i need that understanding to be able to pray correctly or pray effectively how am i going to understand the nature of god just a quick question to all of us what will help us know the nature of god any answers to that okay his word uh, that that's one of the answers what what else do you think will help us understand the nature of god in the online students please do type in the chat okay someone says reading the word okay same same answer any other answers it's a correct answer you you don't have to look very scared uh okay love one more answer there is love another is his presence all right okay so when we when we walk with him we begin to realize you know this is what he's made up of love um and uh, spending time with god relating with god being in his presence will also enable us to know the nature of god so that's good so our primary source of knowing god would obviously be his word okay and we know that even in our in our time spent with the lord or you would want to call it like you know a walk with the lord uh, we will not experience anything which is not revealed in god's word you know about god's nature or in other words okay maybe you know there there can be there are so many things about god that um uh, we we may never we may even miss out you know noting some of them in scripture uh, however you know here's the point the word will not contradict okay what the real nature of god is that we can be assured that definitely the word will not tell us something which you know uh, is untrue about the nature of god so i need to establish in my mind a clear image of who god is what his nature is based on his word and um, this will enable me to pray in the right manner then you know i said that the word will reveal who god is and in the word of god you know we also see that there are different names of god covenant names of god which have been given to us what are some of those covenant names jehova rafa jaira shalom adonai okay abneza okay all right so uh, the jehova names right uh, are the covenant names which have been given to us so even with those names we are able to understand so when i ask a question you know does god heal we you know that scripture says that god has revealed himself as what jehova rafa okay so jehova rafa simply means his nature is a healing nature always so if today i want to you know understand who god is he still is a healer 
he has not changed because we are living in the 21st century his nature doesn't change and he's already revealed it with his covenant names in the word of god he is jehovah shalom he only gives us peace he does not give us you know confusion and uh, anxiety and worry all that doesn't come from god jesus is the prince of peace so you see with what scripture has to say and the covenant names of god we can paint a picture or an image of god for us and that image is what will help us pray you know unto god in the right manner so we have our um, friends here online who have also given us their input so people have written el shaddai jovan nissi uh, okay emmanuel all right so these are all some of the other um, titles that we see of god in the word all right so now all of these things help us go before god with the right kind of prayers okay now i'll just give you an example the example is uh when i let's say i'm sick okay i would never pray that you know god make it worse you know or god you know let let me never recover what do you think is that a good prayer to pray how many of you vote for you know this is a good prayer can i see your hands raised maybe people on the chat can just say yes or something it's a good prayer oh all of us seem to agree that we don't pray prayers like that simply because we understand that our god is a healer and one of the other ways in which the nature of god has been revealed to us the best way is what word yes and word does not contradict the nature of god what else has confirmed the nature of god to us jesus very good yes jesus so we see in the book of hebrews that jesus is the express image of god in other words if i want to understand what father god is thinking or what father god would do in a certain situation you know what would father god do when he uh, meets with an adulterous woman what would father god do if a leper comes and asks him to heal him what would father god do if he sees two demon possessed men you look at the life of jesus what did jesus do because jesus came to reveal the father isn't it that's what he told us i came to reveal the father so by looking at the life of jesus by studying the life of jesus i have a good idea about the nature of god okay so when i understand the nature of god the way i pray will be aligned to the nature of god i'll never pray prayers like god to no, give me more worry give me more anxiety you know make everything more difficult no we don't pray such prayers because we see that the lord jesus he you know went about preaching teaching healing delivering those who were oppressed by the devil and so he was doing all these good works and setting people free so how is it that we can expect this god of the bible and this god who is revealed through the life of jesus to do um you know the opposite of what we have seen revealed so when i pray with an understanding of who god is what his nature is i will be praying in line with what god wants me to pray okay so we have to understand the nature of god and that will give us a very good and a strong foundation for prayer now let me also uh, just touch on this so when we talk about the nature of god now sometimes if we limit you know our understanding to our own thinking we will not be able to pray prayers to the full extent you know that god wants i the uh, the example would be if i see 
a circumstance. Let's say there is a financial difficulty in my family. Okay. I could simply pray that, okay, God, you know, everything is over. I'm going to stop right here. I'm not going to be able to do anything. I give up on my dreams. I give up on my future. I don't have a future. You know, th this would be the kind of communication that I have with God. But if I understand the nature of God, what does the Bible say? With God, nothing shall be impossible. Okay. So then I begin to recognize that, you know, with God, there are many possibilities. So my prayer life will change because I've understood who this God is that I am praying to. Otherwise, I will limit myself and I will also limit God in the prayers that I pray. You know, sometimes when we hear that, you know, somebody is very sick, or uh, the situation is really uh, tough. You remember the time when uh, Jairus, he came for his daughter's healing and uh, he was seeking after Jesus. What did the people tell him? Forget it. You know, your daughter is already dead. Just go home, Jairus. This Jesus can't do anything. But what is the nature of our God? He does the impossible, right? So Jesus just, you know, shoved them all off and he went and did what God can do. And so when I recognize these things, you know, my prayer life will begin to really thrive because I know who God is, the God that I'm praying to, that he's the God of the impossibilities. Okay. There are many such examples I could give you. You know, would, would anybody here, when we begin something, we all say, uh, you know, dear Heavenly Father, bless us as we study today. Anybody here uh, seen someone uh, pray a prayer before robbing a bank and say, I'm going to rob a bank. You know, God, please bless this effort of mine. What do you think? Is that an effective prayer or an ineffective prayer? Ineffective prayer. Why? Exactly. It is not in line with the nature of God. God is righteous. So how is it that somebody can ask for God's blessing when they're doing something illegal or unrighteous? Doesn't work. Okay. Uh, so things like that. When we plan to do something evil or, you know, if we are caught up in some sinful habit and we say, okay, God, you know, let it be, let it be in my life. It's fine. I will live with it. Do you think that kind of a prayer is okay? No, because we serve a holy God, right? So we cannot uh, pray prayers which are misaligned to the nature of God. Or, you know, how about a prayer like, God, I know that person, such an evil person, you know, you put some curse on his life. You know, you put some disease upon this. I've heard people say things like that. I prayed that they will be, you know, hurt or... Uh, they will, uh, some destruction will come on them and it happened. You know, people say, saying things like that. But would that be a right prayer? Would Jesus do that? Has Jesus ever done that? Never. Never. So here's the point. We have to understand the nature of God and pray prayers in line with the nature of God. That's when you know, we are building our prayer life on the right foundation. Okay, so always remember that when I'm praying something, when I'm saying something, what does the Bible say about who God is? Okay, then pray accordingly and you will see that your prayers will be very fruitful. Now let's come to the second point here. And even while I am uh, talking on this subject, if you feel, no, I have a question, Feel free, you can just you know, stop me, raise your hand, those who are uh, here in class. And I'm constantly looking at the chat section here for the online students. Uh, so please feel free, you can always um, ask your questions. Okay? Uh, moving right along, intimacy with God is the second point. So as we explained the meaning of prayer, the purpose of prayer, just going back to that will help us look at prayer in the right way. No? 
Prayer is intimacy with God. How did Jesus teach us to pray? The Lord's Prayer. Anyone? The starting, the beginning of that? Our Father. And for the people of Jesus' times, it was amazing to hear something like that. Because for them, Jehovah God was great, almighty. He uh, was um, this, you know, impersonal. And yet, you know, great figure. So, for a man like Jesus to call this great God as Father in itself was like a blasphemy. And they blamed him for that. They said, they told him, you know, this man calls God his Father. What is this? But we need to understand that the kind of prayer that Jesus prayed and the example of Jesus' prayer life to us is that of relationship. Jesus reached out to the Father with a relationship. And even today, you know, sometimes we, uh, when we pray, we say things like Master God, um, uh, Almighty God, nothing wrong with it as long as we understand that we have a relationship with God. Otherwise, what, what uh, happens is, it's like you go to a government office and you, you submit an application, right? You have nothing to do with the people there. You just want your needs met. Okay? So, we could look at the Bible and we could look at, you know, all the patterns in the Bible and the lives of godly people. We can follow those patterns but have nothing to do with God personally. But that will be a very um, unfortunate way of looking at prayer. Where uh, we, we know everything about prayer but it does not help us build a relationship with God. Okay? So intimacy with God is another reason why I want to pray. Now, just think about this. What if you set time aside and you begin to pray about something, okay, let's say 10 days, and for whatever reason, you, know, you did not get an answer to that prayer, suppose. Was it effective or not? Those 10 days of setting aside, let's say, half an hour every day. You set aside, you spend time in prayer, uh, but you didn't get the exact thing that you were asking for. So was your prayer effective or not effective? What do you think? Effective? OK, there's uh, someone saying effective. Someone on the chat also saying effective. But if you say something effective or not effective, you have to explain why. <laughs> so why do you say it's effective? OK, great, great. Good answer. So uh, uh, we have an explanation here which says that uh, maybe at that point in time, God did not give us what we were asking for. But it can happen at another timing which God has in mind. OK, uh, accept it. Uh, the answers here is, uh, are, uh, it is effective, but not the right time to get uh, the answer. OK, seems like both online and person, all of you are in sync. Then um, uh, someone here says, God will answer at the right time. Yes, effective, because my relationship was strengthened with him. It is effective, however, God's timing is Perfect. OK, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for thinking uh, along with me about this particular matter. You see, it is about the answer to my prayer. OK? The, what I'm trying to tell us is the way we understand prayer is only asking and receiving. There is more to prayer. So in this case, 10 days, I spent half an hour, half an hour, half an hour in God's presence. I did not get what I thought God should give me. But what has happened in the process? I have gotten to know God and his presence better. Yes or no? Yes? That, that's right. And um, someone here in the chat also mentioned the same thing. that. We were able to spend time in God's presence. How do you build relationships? I mentioned this in the last class. 
how do you build relationships spend time talk to your friends or talk to your family members we all take time isn't it to uh, nurture those relationships which are important to us so how can we expect our relationship with god to shine and thrive and all that without spending time with him now we can know all about god we can also know the principles in his word we can apply the principles nothing wrong are we relating with god in doing those things we are but one of the best ways that god has given us to relate with him is through prayer so when i'm spending time with god it's more about relationship our father no wonder jesus said that our father i'm relating with my father okay i'm getting to know my father and you know i want my father to know me so those times of prayer are not just to get something from god okay so we need to understand that um and you know the bible talks a lot about fellowship Okay, that our fellowship is with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are all having uh, times of fellowship with one another, and that way we are building our friendship. But you know, we must recognize that God wants us to have fellowship with Him. So being in His presence is also building my relationship with Him, strengthening my relationship with Him. and you know when you spend a lot of time in somebody's presence you know let's say a teacher or a lecturer professor in your college maybe they are the best in that subject and you are their um, you know chief one of those chief uh, students whom they are overseeing after a period of time you could say that you know some of the key things that you talk about may probably be what that professor talks about or that lecturer talks about because it just rubs off on you and in the same way when we spend time in god's presence we fellowship with him in the secret place we can say that our heart is starting to change okay so i'm putting it that way our heart begins to change maybe i came in as a different person but i'm going out as another person so god's presence will saturate us his thoughts will saturate us right so uh, his spirit and the work of his spirit will begin to saturate us so that is why that time of prayer is so precious in god's sight and in our notes here you know, we have uh, um a uh, uh, an excerpt from an intercessor called rees howell uh, and norman grub you know, he records uh, uh, something about the prayer time of Reese Howell and he I I will summarize it for us basically he says that when he used to go into prayer he would spend time uh in the presence of God uh and it was his experience that when he knew God was going to answer that prayer you know he somehow knew it after spending some time in prayer it was as if the holy spirit would put him on put it on his heart and tell him hey it's done or i want you to do this so it was god's communication coming in such a strong and a clear way to reese howell in that place of prayer in that place of uh, you know fellowshipping with god so we must make this a priority every day uh, we will come to this later when we study about the life of jesus uh, but then you know you need to recognize that i need to spend time with god i need to build my relationship with god yes reading god's word is one of the main ways one of the best ways but also spending time in prayer okay to be able to talk to god and hear from god so there are several scriptures here in our notes that talk about this fellowship um or um, what is fellowship would somebody like to define that it will make it easier to understand you know the interaction uh, that we want with god what is fellowship in simple words okay companion 
okay spend time and communicate and hear from him too so two way right yeah that's right companionship gathering friendship okay these are all uh, words that help us understand fellowship okay trying to build a relationship with god so uh we are not just called for fellowship with one another but we are also called for fellowship with the godhead which is the father the son and the holy spirit now let's consider the life of jesus what kind of fellowship did he have with the father it's very beautiful we will come back to this and spend more time on this later on but uh you would notice that he said my food is what to do the will of my father and he would do what he saw the father do he would wait for the father to tell him so he would hear from the father and then do the um, you know the works of god the miracles and all of that if you see the kind of time jesus was spending with the father you'll see that whole night he was praying okay there are instances where he would wake up early in the morning while it is still dark and go out to a solitary place so that there is no disturbance why because he wants to spend time with the father speak to the father and the father speaks back to him okay so this is the kind of fellowship that jesus had with the heavenly father whatever we do our best example is always the lord jesus isn't it so even when it comes to prayer when you see the life of jesus jesus spent a lot of time with the father and from that place came you know the works that he did and so that is our example i need to fellowship with god so when we say fellowship with god we could say you know fellowship with the father fellowship with the son another way of fellowshiping with the son is what he's the word isn't it so we read the word and uh, in um, second corinthians yeah second corinthians 13 14 we are encouraged to fellowship with the holy spirit so can we fellowship with the holy spirit all the time is it possible yes or no yes it's very much possible um if you look at the old testament people did not have that privilege because in order for us to fellowship with god we need to go into the holy of holies and only the priests were allowed to do that but think about it today you and i any given moment we can talk to the holy spirit where does he live he lives inside us so we can have communion interaction companionship friendship partnership whatever you want to call it with the holy spirit right here and right now and so when we talk about prayer life you know we have to build our relationship with god so we have answers here on the chat as well which um tell us that we are the holy ghost temple and he is on the inside of us that's very correct so we are called to fellowship with god so all of this helps us know that prayer is to do what to strengthen my relationship with god so don't look at it as an activity that has to be completed okay it's not a religious activity to be completed it will help me strengthen my relationship with god we have seen the very example of the lord jesus of walking with the father and so we need to develop this kind of uh, relationship so one we said is spend time in prayer because there you can interact you can speak to god god can speak back to you uh, and also personal worship right what did jesus say he said that Uh, he god seeks those who worship him in spirit and in truth so when we are spending time with god you know we are able to um develop that relationship with him and in any 
you know good relationship one more very important thing which is required is transparency and we see the way the psalmist related with god he never came to god uh, saying oh you know i'm so great i'm so mighty i have everything under control there are times when he is very vulnerable before god where he says god search my heart know my anxieties if there's anything wrong in me then just guide me in the right path you know as um, psalm 139 verses 23 and 24 uh, remind us and even in psalm 51 uh, verse 6 after david had sinned he comes back to god and he says god you know i want to be honest with you yeah honesty is so important in our relationship with god when we come with all those other things uh, that that we saw last week remember we talked about laying the axe to the root of pride self lust jealousy okay so when we come to god with these works of the flesh our prayer you know it's like there is a barrier between god and us god wants to reach out to us but something is hindering in between okay however when this is dealt with we are coming transparently before god so if there is something which we have to uh, deal with or ask forgiveness for repent of you know sometimes it could be a heart of unbelief when we come to god we we feel you know disappointed discouraged but we can come honestly before the lord and say god this is what you know i i have in my heart to please help me to overcome these things so when we come honestly then that relationship which we have with god will go one step forward because god will be in a position to do something in our lives okay so honesty transparency is very very important then when we pray in order for us to build our relationship with the lord strong uh, we have to also listen to him um has anyone had this experience or maybe you have done it as a child you know go to a house ring the bell run away they sometimes the kids do that they come to the house they ring the bell you open the door nobody is there but we do this in prayer many times we start our prayer heavenly father this is this it got like uh, i i want to say something i'm in bye i'm going you know i don't have time i have to catch the bus i have to you know do this we run away when god wants to speak to us we are not available anymore right so we need to take time to wait in his presence because while we have poured out our hearts we have to also listen to what god is saying and when god speaks you know that refreshing comes that revival comes uh, the, that strength comes sometimes new ideas we are totally we feel like oh i'm at the end of the road but you spend time in prayer suddenly what happens new ideas you know amazing creativity it just begins to flow how did you get that i spoke to god but i waited in his presence and he released all of this into my life so spend time wait for him wait for his word listen to him and this is the way of developing and building our relationship with god and it's when we strengthen our relationship with him that you know we will overflow you know with what comes through intimacy and well, what is that we will have the mind of god okay so we will be able to recognize what god you know sometimes uh believers ask young believers they ask this question how do you know how do you know that god said that you know how do you know that this is the promise that god has given you when you start to spend time with god you know i'm not uh, negating the power of the word or the authority of the word or anything we go by that always but the more you walk with god you become attuned to his voice okay then it is a little bit i could say easier to pick up a little faster for us to know what god is doing and what god is saying so we can begin to feel the heart of god we can begin to 
understand the mind of God when we are spending time in prayer with Him and our intimacy with the Lord has grown. Uh, we can have God encounters, as um, your notes says here. We can see the manifestation of God's work and also see fruitfulness in our life. So I'll quickly touch upon some of the barriers to intimacy with God. What do you think? What can be the barriers to fellowshipping with God and developing a deep relationship? Okay. Right, jealousy, lust, okay. The works of the flesh, that's true. Anything else that hinders us personally? Oh, you can talk from your personal experience. Love for the world, that's true. No, Jesus said that when you love the world, then you can't love God, right? Uh, then your intimacy with the Lord is uh, hindered. Um, somebody here on the chat says busy schedule, okay, busy schedule, sin. Okay, these are all hindrances to intimacy with God. That's so true. Okay. Um, what else? Anything else? Being worldly, money. What else? Disobedience. Yes, disobedience, sin. All this becomes a hindrance in our intimacy with the Lord. And that's true. You know, we we um have these barriers that can affect a good prayer life. So sin is the first thing. Second is a mind which is sin conscious. We're constantly thinking that, you know, God will not accept me. God will reject me. You know, things like this, when we don't know who we are in Christ Jesus, even that will hinder us from coming closer to God. Because our mind, which is filled with sin consciousness and guilt, will keep us away. We'll always have some cover up before God. But we need to pray and ask God, God, break it so that I can recognize that I am a child who is forgiven and dearly loved by you. So when I have that kind of uh, a revelation of the Father, I can truly enjoy my time in prayer. Second is lack of discipline. Now, as I told you, one day we pray, one day we don't pray, one day we pray for a little bit of time, you know, something. As and when, you know, when I feel like, when I feel led by God, people say all those things. But, you know, discipline is helpful. When we have discipline, we can set aside times and ensure that we are consistently spending time with the Lord. But a lack of discipline will hinder that. So a lack of discipline would also do that. Busyness, as some of you pointed out, uh, we get so busy with all the activities, morning to evening. We say, God, I'm tired. God is like, I'm taking care of the whole world. I'm not tired, you know, and you are already tired. So busyness, we just get caught up with everything that we have to do. But we, so one of the best things we can do is pray in the morning. Okay, we'll discuss all this later. Uh, maybe there are some people who are not morning people. But then sometimes it really helps because then you spend that best time with God and then you go you know, do other, other stuff. So busyness can um, catch us. Uh, incorrect heart condition, we've discussed you know, different things we have. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a huge hindrance. Even Jesus talked about it in the Lord's Prayer. So unforgiveness can hinder us and a spirit of heaviness. So sometimes when we carry emotional issues and burdens, uh, we end up thinking that God doesn't care or, you know, there are all these things that are unresolved between you and God. That even if we spend time in prayer, we're not able to fully engage, fully receive. So we can seek healing of our souls before we um, uh, come in prayer. Okay, so what I'll do is I we will go ahead and take a break. I noticed that it's already uh, nine fifty, so ten minute break. We will restart at ten o one. And online students, please don't cut the call. Just go on mute um, and uh, turn off your cameras. We'll come back and restart at ten o one. See you soon. Thank you.